Welcome to What's Happening Now, Next Tech's local event and attraction show. I'm your guest host, Samantha Butler, and for your regular host, Jenny Liker. We have a full lineup of guests for you today, starting with Sharon Black and Eldine Holtis from Smith Center. Now, Eldine, you're the son of the voice of the Kansas City Chiefs, if I'm not mistaken. I'm the father of the son. Of father the, of the uh, son. He's my of the son. Kansas City Thank Chiefs. you. <laughs> so very exciting. And Sharon is the co-author of a screenplay that has become a movie, a very exciting movie that will be premiering this January in both Smith Center and Wichita, entitled Home on the Range. Now, I know for sure any born and bred Kansan certainly recognizes that title. That's our Kansas State song, correct? Mm -hmm. So Sharon, tell me a little bit about what made you write a screenplay, want to make a movie about our state song, and just how did this come about? Well, I think um, I always tell people I was sort of born into home on the range because uh, my aunt and uncle lived up north of the cabin, almost on the Nebraska state line, and we'd go up there and visit, and we'd always pass the cabin on Highway 8. And then my mother's, uh, one of her school teachers was Margaret Nelson that wrote the book Home on the Range, so I was sort of connected into the story that way and she bought my mother bought a copy of home on the range and i read it like in high school and then read it a couple more times and then i go you know through high school and college and and about the year 2000 i thought um i need something to write about and the only thing i could come up with i, I knew i wanted to do something about Kansas and history and I thought well home on the range and so I got out the book and read it again and I thought you know this would make a darn good movie absolutely so I just took it upon myself to write you know a, a three-act screenplay it really wasn't totally you know true to the to the story, I just wanted to explore and get to know the characters, and I started with Dan Kelly, who wrote the um, the music to the song "Home mm -hmm. on the Range," because because it was a poem originally, "My Western Home." So I started with him coming out to Kansas, and then um, I you know worked on it for quite a while and. I really didn't know what to do with it. Um, I think internet had finally hit Smith Center. Mm -hmm. So I got on there and so you, you know, Google all these film companies and try to figure out, you know, who do I send it to? And, and I thought, well, do people know about, really know about Home on the Range? And so then you have to write a, a, a like a, tagline to go with it, a short sentence to, you know, to tell what the movie is about. Right. So I struggled with that for quite a while. So I put it on this one uh, website that producers would look at, at the script and had a few people. So I worked on it, you know, off and on from the year 2000 up until um, 2011. And, you know, I worked on it, forgot about it, worked on it, and then finally with the activities with the Home on the Range cabin and Eldine getting involved, and, you know, I finally had a, a solid foundation or a solid people to work with, and so I had told Eldine that I had written a, a screenplay about Home on the Range. Right. Now, Eldine, when do you come in now? We've got this screenplay, this great idea for a movie. How do you go about getting this movie made? Well, we uh, it started with meeting Ken Spurgeon uh, at a, another event where I was promoting Home on the Range, and I had a presentation to talk about it, and Lone Chim Ken, Ken Spurgeon, Lone Chimney, had a display there, and they, up to this time, had always been promoting Civil War films, which related to specifically to Kansas. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, you know, there's another story that's here, and it's the story of the song of the home on the range. And, and he kind of tolerated my, I think, he'd say, yeah, yeah, everybody's got a story, you know, and all of that. Well, then, as the cabin was, as the cabin was restored, and he came to learn of the inter national and international appeal 
of the song, he became more and more interested. And that's then how I think that we hooked Sharon and he up to start the basis for the for the uh, screenplay. And so it went off then and it developed and it took that long now to come about. Fantastic. Well, this is very exciting and a great way to share Kansas history. Um, with, uh, you know, a lot of people have heard of this song, but a lot of people don't know there's a, there's a deep meaning to it, um, especially to Smith County and um, the people in Smith Center. So that's very exciting. Um, where can they see this movie? Well, it's going to be shown in the, the official premiere before there's any public uh, sales or anything is going to be in Wichita, Kansas, in the Orpheum Theater on January the 13th, 2017. And that will then be the, the, the first showing. Then it will be in Smith Center on the 14th and the 15th for a afternoon matinees on a Saturday and a Sunday. And then we also, uh, we, are, we, are, we have plans in the works. We don't have the date specific yet, but it'll also premiere in Union Station, Kansas City, Missouri. So that, uh, that'll be the three premieres and then it will become public then, the DV DVDs for sale and then we'll set up filmings, or we won't, uh, Lone Chimney will, all around the state at different locations, particularly cowboy towns, Dodge nice. City and Ellsworth and places like that. Fantastic. So lots of opportunities to see this movie. I highly recommend it. It's going to be just fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us today and make sure that you check out the premiere of Home on the Range in January. We have to take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking all things hunting season, so don't go anywhere. Your home's exterior is the best defense against harsh weather conditions. With insulated vinyl siding, energy efficient windows, spray foam insulation, and metal roofing from AquaShield Roofing and Construction, you can protect your home from howling winds and ice cold temperatures. Don't let Mother Nature interfere with the comfort of your home. Call or visit us online today for a free estimate. AquaShield Roofing and Construction. Our team is dedicated to your complete satisfaction. Make a difficult choice an easy one with Cedar View Assisted Living's knowledgeable and caring staff. Your loved one will be professionally taken care of as they transition into their new community. With movies, holiday parties, planned exercises and games, residents will have opportunities every day to enjoy their time at Cedar View. Multiple room styles are available, ensuring a just right fit for your loved one. Come see Cedar View Assisted Living for yourself next to Sternberg Museum. The care you need, the home you want. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Greg Serene to the community. Dr. Serene is a board certified surgeon and trained in sports medicine. His practice will focus on knee injuries, joint replacements, and general orthopedics. Dr. Serene has been practicing for over 20 years and looks forward to providing orthopedic care to Norton and the surrounding communities. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Coming home for the holidays is special. Seeing loved ones, spending time with family and friends makes memories that last a lifetime. And we know some can't be home for the holidays. So we're helping you make this holiday season extra special. Give the ones you love the gift that helps you stay in touch all year round. If you activate a new smartphone with Next Tech Wireless, we'll gift you free service until 2018. With Next Tech Wireless, you're never far from home. The plumber said there's something wrong with my water. It looks like you have hard water. You need a water softener. Let me show you the options we have. Hey, do you guys deliver salt? We sure do. What about drinking water? We have water coolers and drinking water systems. We even have bottled water. Find us on Facebook and itsbetterwater.com. And remember, it's not in water. What a girl wants in her home kitchen. Ease of use, flexibility, fun, the latest kitchen design, Frigidaire Professional Real Stainless Steel for fewer finger smudges, a French door refrigerator, convection cooking, a quiet dishwasher. Have the staff at Genuine Appliance in Hayes demonstrate new Frigidaire Professional Appliances to find what you want. Genuine Appliance at 1224 East 27th in Hayes. Everything a girl wants. Welcome back. 
Joining me now, I have Matt Smith, Regional Wildlife Supervisor with the Kansas Wildlife Parks and Tourism Regional Branch here in Hayes. And as I said before the break, we're gonna be talking about hunting season. It is upon us, it's well underway. Uh, Matt, first of all, welcome to the show. And how is hunting season going thus far? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, so far, it's been going pretty good. The upland bird season just opened uh, this past weekend. Uh, we were anticipating it to be a pretty good season this year. We've, uh, from our surveys and our roadside data that we've collected over the summer, uh, we knew that quail were gonna be up uh, mm -hmm. quite a bit and pheasants were looking pretty good as well, uh, improved anyway. And so we had pretty high hopes going into the season and so far the reports are coming back uh, pretty good overall. People are seeing birds where they weren't before. Uh, they were getting a few more birds than they had in the past few years here, which has been kind of tough. So. Overall, we're pretty pleased with uh, the way things are going. That's great. Um, as you probably have noticed, we've had some very unseasonably warm weather this fall, uh, more so than uh, I think in recorded history, recent recorded history. How has that had an effect, if any, on, uh, at least with pheasant season that has been going on for a while? Yeah, it, it always plays a factor, you know, uh, it's, it's usually the best time to hunt pheasants when it's really cold and maybe a little snow on the ground. It's a little easier to find them and the birds tend to bunch up a little bit more. But in these warm weather that we've been having, and uh, it's a great time to be outside, but it's also a little tougher to find birds. And it's a little tougher on people and dogs as well, being out in that kind of hot weather. If you're going through some pretty heavy cover, it's just a little tough on you. But uh, actually this weekend was pretty good. We had a little frost on Saturday morning for the opener, so that was kind of nice and it cooled things down and it made the grass a little bit wet and that helps dogs work a little bit better when the ground's a little bit wet, they can smell a little better. So actually it was pretty good uh, weather for this weekend overall. Absolutely. Um, I know one question I had, um, are there public uh, hunting opportunities that maybe you could share, maybe if you have people that are new to the area or maybe even new to hunting um, that don't have um, places that they usually go to hunt or already established places that they go, what sort of public hunting opportunities are available in our area? Yeah, we're very fortunate in western Kansas and, and, and through most of the state actually. Uh, we've got a couple different uh, options. Number one is our public lands that we manage in the state. Um, we have several around the larger reservoirs. We have a lot of public lands that are opening to hunting. Uh, unfortunately, public lands in Kansas are only about less than 2% is in public ownership. Right. But we do have a great program, it's called the Walk-In Hunting Areas Program, where we lease private land and we open it up to public hunting. And it could be for upland game birds, it could be for deer, it could be a turkey opportunity, waterfowl even, on some of that public land. We have over a million acres enrolled into that program that's open to public hunting. And it's been a tremendous success. Uh, landowners uh, tend to very much like it, uh, hunters like it. Uh, certainly, uh, especially out-of-state hunters really like the program. All the areas are printed in an atlas so they can get online, they can put it on their phone, they can get a paper copy, and they can go right to those properties and it's posted and it'll list what species you know, could be potentially found in those areas. And it's been a really popular thing. Uh, it just opens up a lot of access for people and uh, it's all private land. So the success of the program and the future of the program really depends on how hunters respect those landowners' properties. And we always ask, you know, that time of year, you know, you know, treat the property like it was yours. If you're on somebody else's property, you know, don't litter, you know, don't open gates, things like that. They cannot drive on those properties. It's walk-in only, but uh, it's a tremendous opportunity for folks. And a lot of our hunting that we observed over the weekend and every opening weekend, you know, the majority of that is on the walk-in hunting program Absolutely. property. Absolutely. If people wanted more information about um, those opportunities, where can they go? They can go to our website, ksoutdoors.com. It has all the information on hunting, fishing, state parks, just everything that the department does. And like I said, the maps of the atlases are on the website and you can download pages, you could put it on your phone. Uh, you can just get all the information from ksoutdoors.com. Absolutely, and I know one last thing, um, you know, when talking about hunting, safety is always an issue. Um, what sort of uh, precautions um, would you give area hunters to make sure that everyone stays as safe as possible this hunting season? Well, it is a big thing and uh, for bird hunters, upland bird hunters, uh, it's not required that you wear hunter orange, but it's a, definitely a good idea, especially if you're with a group to hunt with someone else, to wear an orange hat and vest, you know, so you're seen by the other members of the group. For deer hunting, it is required for rifle deer hunting 
You have to have an orange hat. You have to have at least 200 inches of orange on you. Okay. That's 100 inches on the front, 100 inches on the back. Uh, this is a requirement, so you're seen by everyone. Uh, deer hunting season is uh, coming up here very soon. Starts November 30th for rifle season and runs through December 11th. And deer, this time of year, you know, they're going through their mating rituals. Uh, the bucks are out looking for does. And it's a time that you could, you could characterize it as those bucks kind of losing their common sense. And that's why they're a little more susceptible to hunting that time of year. But unfortunately, a lot of our hunters sometimes lose a little common sense too this time sure. of year with little buck fever and things like that. So we really ask them to use their head to be very respectful, not only to the landowners that they may be hunting properties on, but also be respectful to other hunters and respect the deer themselves. You know, make sure you have a good shot, you know, make sure that you're doing things right. Make sure you know your limitations of your own equipment and your own abilities that you have. And just do all those things that are just common sense. Common you know? sense, right. absolutely. Well, Matt, thank you so much for being here. And area hunters, make sure you stay safe um, this hunting season and happy hunting. We need to take a quick break, but we will be right back, so don't go anywhere. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. All Face Funeral Chapel and Smith Center can help you and your loved ones prepare for a difficult time with pre-arranged funeral planning. Not only will it be a stress reliever during a tough time, it will save your family money by locking in a guaranteed rate so funeral costs will be less of a burden. Pre-arranged funeral plans now have options to make paying for a funeral easier, such as a 3, 5, and 7 year payment option. Call 785-686-4120 or visit allfacefuneralchapel.com. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. The Rusty Tractor in Kensington offers big city dining with a small town feel. The Rusty Tractor features hand cut steaks, burgers, wraps and more, all with generous portions and quality products. The Rusty Tractor is proud to serve the area farming communities and welcomes everyone. Come as you are in your boots and jeans. You'll be right at home. Open daily and conveniently located on Highway 36. For more information, find them on Facebook or for a full menu, visit RustyTractorKensington.com. The easiest way for you to get anywhere in the country is the Hayes Regional Airport. Twice daily flights between Hayes and Denver means you are only 45 minutes from over 100 direct flights to get you to your destination as quick as possible. Service from SkyWest has completely changed the flight experience out of Hayes thanks to the 50 passenger jets that include complimentary beverages and an in-flight restroom. With free parking and short security lines, there has never been a better time to use the Hayes Regional Airport. The next time you travel, check Hayes first at flyhays.com to see the time and money you could save. Make moving and storing your home or business easy with Storage Solutions of Hayes and Victoria. With two facilities, they can store anything from antiques to automobiles and everything in between. Interior units for items needing special care. Drive up units of all sizes, perfect for home or business. And outside storage for trucks, boats, and RVs. As an authorized U-Haul dealer, they have everything for your next move across town or across the country. Storage Solutions of Hayes and Victoria. Making moving and storing easy. Welcome back. Joining me now, I have Roger Bixenman, Superintendent for the Hayes Recreation Commission. Roger, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, and Roger's just going to talk to us a little bit today about what's coming up in the um, world of local athletics. Um, the first thing I think I'd like to ask you about is a new fitness center coming mm -hmm. to the Hayes Rec in 2017. It's exciting stuff. Um, Tell us about that. How'd that come about? And Well, it is exciting stuff, and it's been a long process. We started our board, uh, the HRC board, and I and staff started talking about it probably, gosh, probably now four years ago and started planning for it. And 
So the process took shape uh, last year in 2016, and um, they started construction around March, April. Can't lose track of time a little bit. Sure. But, um, so the building's up. Um, most of the outside work is done. They've got a few things left to do uh, to tidy up the outside, but all the in inside stuff, the sheet rocking and the masonry walls are all going up, and um, so things are progressing nicely. Um, of course, this last fall we've had some uh, weather delays, so that, that put us a little bit behind, but we're planning on opening it up sometime in the middle of February or first part of March, and uh, it's around a 13,000 square foot facility, which our current fitness facility right now is about 3,600, so quite a bit of uh, space added. Um, it'll be broken down into cardio and weights, and we'll have a couple of aerobics rooms, uh, one a yoga room, and of course bigger locker rooms and, and reception area and a couple offices. So. Um, it all came about uh, basically talking about what we need to do next, and uh, this will help us in our wellness area, grow it, uh, as well as our current wellness center, fitness center, we'll utilize that or repurpose that for our leisure programming and move a couple staff back there and have them do leisure program out of that. And then our gym three currently houses our aerobics classes now, so we'll be able to move that out and utilize that more in the evenings and weekends for practices and games. That's great. And would the new fitness center be located at the same Canterbury location mm -hmm. as the current center? Correct. It's just right to the north as you enter, uh, kind of splits the driveway, and it will be right to the north and uh, faces uh, south and north, so it's, it's exciting times. That is exciting. That's, that's going to be yeah. great. Um, another thing I've been seeing with Hayes Recreation and kind of curious about is futsal, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, apparently uh, indoor soccer league. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to admit, when I saw the name, I thought it was a typo. What is futsal? <laughs> futsal is just, like you said, it's indoor soccer. I really don't know where the uh, name came from, but uh, it's played, uh, our youth play 4v4, and uh, they use, utilize a goalie as well. Um, but we started this program, gosh, probably 10, 12 years ago. And uh, it's seen its trends. It's kind of, it was pretty, uh, participation-wise, pretty big. When we first started, it's kind of dropped off a little bit. But they play on Sunday afternoons down at 13th Street just because they have the walls there to accommodate that. And then we also have an indoor soccer league for adults. And usually we get somewhere around 8 to 12 teams for that. And they play wow. Sundays after the, the youth are done. Usually, usually start in January, and uh, they usually in the afternoons, and then adults follow that up in the evening. So, so futsal, I guess, is like football and soccer, I guess, combined. I guess I don't, I really don't know. That's so. great. So, great opportunities to stay in shape and something to do during the winter. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be cold outside. That's awesome. Uh, speaking of soccer, um, any uh, tournaments coming up in the spring? I know um, mm -hmm. with the Bickle Schmidt Sports Complex. Um, we have been getting more and more tournaments and um, athletic events here because of that. What's coming down the pike? Sure. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. A.J. Preisner, our complex director, has worked on the 2017 tournament schedule. Um, last year, in 2016, we had a good year. Um, we had about a, right around 12,000 participants that played some sport, either soccer, softball, adult, uh, men's or women's or co-ed, um, flag football. So we had right around 11,000, 12,000 participants. Uh, for tournaments in 2017, we have usually around four or five, six um, adult softball tournaments. Um, youth tournaments, we usually have two baseball tournaments. Uh, one of those is usually the third weekend in June. Um, we also host uh, our state tournaments, uh, 14 under Hat Dumont State Tournament. And then last year was our first year for the 14 under girls ASA State Softball Tournament. Um, they were both the same weekend, usually the second weekend in July. We're hoping to get a younger age group in our baseball, uh, nine and unders, um, but that's uh, state's still trying to decide where to place that one at. So we're, we're hopeful that we'll get that one as well. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. Well, that all sounds great. And make sure you check out the Hayes Recreation Commission's website. Um, always lots of fun events for kids, adults, a way to stay active and um, have some stuff to do this winter and into the spring. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And as always, there's always fun events going on in your communities. And so if you would like to be featured on what's happening now, contact us at least two months in advance and tell us about your event. Until next time, uh, tune into what's happening now on Next Tech's Local One or on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.